Oh, you're back. How did I make these lecture notes? So there was definitely a lot of control C, control V, because the, at least the header information, welcome to introduction to quantum computing, is the same each time. In this video, also, I copied the description from the last one, pasted it into the new one, and changed the lecture number. Uh, is it cheating? No, I don't think so. This gets to the question of, can I do the same thing with quantum information? Can I copy quantum information? If I have, I mean, the idea of copying goes back before control C, control V to something like a photocopier. And let's take both examples and abstract it a little bit and say I have some device. It takes in a single bit, say, and there's a blank page. So a bits that have been set to say the zero value that my hard drive or my stack of uh, letter paper in my in my A4 paper in my my printer and what happens on the other side is that I get my original copy back or it stays there and my original YouTube video hasn't changed or file hasn't changed and I get a new copy of the original and it's an exact copy. So let's call this box C, and what C does is it takes as input this bit string B0 and produces BB. Okay, that's fairly trivial. Uh, we can I mean, we make use of the copy operation all the time in conventional data. So perhaps uh, you know, we could do the same thing with quantum data. So the state of a bit is this B here, abstract thing that can be one of two values, zero or one, say. How about quantum data? So with quantum data, I have these states represented by vectors in a complex uh, linear space, and they can be qubits, or it doesn't really matter what, what how many qubits we're considering, but Let's imagine that they're qubits for now and ask, can I take this qubit state, psi, and some blank state, zero, and perform one of these allowed unitary operations such that at the output, I have two copies of psi. So let's call that C. It has to be unitary, and in the most compact, um, yeah, the most compact way to write it in the Dirac notation that we learned was something like this. And well, we can, if you're not quite comfortable with Dirac notation, this is the same as C acting on psi tensor zero and that is going to produce psi tensor psi. Okay, so that's what we want. We want something that does that, and this would be our copy operation. Okay, um, yeah. I think that looks a bit familiar, actually. We saw something like this in the previous week. We had this operator C naught, which took the state 0, 0, and produced 0, 0, and the state 0, 1, and produced 0, 1, and 1, 0, and produced 1, 1, and finally, it took the last basis state 1, 1 and produced 1, 0. And you'll notice that uh, the input here and here is copied. So I have in the second position a blank state. Also down here I have a blank state and the one state has now been copied to 
the blank register. So it looks like the C not operation actually does this copy that we're looking for. And we can draw this in our circuit diagram as well. So you remember that the circuit diagram for C not look like this. And what it's saying is that I have 0, 0, and I produce 0, 0. And if instead I had z 1, 0, I'm going to produce 1, 1. That's what a C0 does. OK, well, that looks like it's the copy information, the copy operation that we've been looking for. Now we can check to see what happens when I apply the C not gate to any state in the first register and that zero state in the second register. So explicitly again, this is C not acting on psi in the first register and zero in the second register. Well, this isn't so hard to figure out because I can first write psi as a linear combination of 0 plus 1. And I already know how the C0 acts in the 0 state and the 1 state, so we can use our property of linearity to distribute that through. And I get alpha acting on, and then the C0 acting on 0, 0 plus beta C0 acting on uh, 1, 0. And from above these highlighted equations here, that's alpha 0, 0 plus beta 1, 1. All right. Um, but is this the state that we're looking for? Remember, the state that we wanted was this one here, psi psi, which is the same as psi tensor psi, and this is equal to alpha 0, 1 plus beta 1, uh, sorry, alpha 0 plus beta 1, tensor alpha 0 plus beta 1, and we can expand this out, distribute this uh, tensor through these binomials, and we'll get alpha 0 tensor alpha 0 so we'll get alpha squared and then we'll get 0 tensor 0 which we can write as 0 0 and then we get alpha 0 tensor beta 1 so we'll have an alpha and a beta and then 0 tensor 1 which we can write as alpha beta 0 1 and the next term would be beta alpha 1 0 and then finally beta squared 1, 1, 1. That doesn't look anything like the equation above. So the C0 acts like this, whereas we wanted an operation to do this. And what we see is that we require, I mean, they don't, these two things aren't the same for an arbitrary alpha and beta, but comparing the two equations, we can see that for the C operate the C not operator to be C, so for to be the C that we're looking for, we need alpha or beta to be zero, so that these terms in the middle of these cross terms that are in the middle of this linear combination disappear and we're left with the original ones that we that have the C not being applied to it. All right, but we notice that if alpha or beta are zero, then we're left with either zero or one. So for C not to be a copy operation, then it only works if the state we want to copy is 0 or 1. 
right? So that's one bit. 0 or 1 is one bit of information and essentially what it's saying is that for C0 to be a copy operation, it can do that, but it can only copy classical information. Okay, so the C0 maybe it doesn't work. Let's ask, what about some other arbitrary operation? Okay, some, some C that takes psi zero and produces psi psi and it has to do that for any state so it also has to do it for some other state psi phi zero which will go to phi phi and what we can do is do a little check and ask what is the normalization or the inner product between the states on the left hand side of the equation and the states on the right hand side of the equations. Okay, so if these two equations hold, then the inner product of the left hand sides must be the inner product of the right hand sides. So we'll take, say, the second equation and take the complex conjugate of that. So I have phi zero and then c. Uh, complex conjugate transpose and then the second state which is C acting on uh, phi zero. Now the first thing to notice before we move on is that this is equal to the identity because C must be unitary. Okay. So that reduces to phi zero psi zero and we can once again write this out explicitly as phi tensor zero inner product with psi tensor zero. But let me just point out this little trick when you're doing the shorthand notation calculations is that you just look at the first entry in the Dirac ket for bra. That's the thing on the left hand side of the tensor product and then the thing in the second position is what's on the right hand side of the tensor product. So I can right away say that this is equal to zero inner product and the phi psi inner product. And zero zero has inner product one. Okay, so the left hand side, right? So this is the left hand side. And the right hand side is the phi psi psi. And again, we pair up the thing that's in the position, the first position of both of the objects, and the thing that's in the second position in both the objects. And so we get phi psi psi or p psi squared. So for these two equations to hold, what we need is the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side or p psi to be equal to p psi squared. And the that can only be satisfied if this inner product, this number, is equal to 0 or 1. So what that means is that I can satisfy these equations here, no problem. However, I can at most copy a set of vectors which are orthogonal. So I can certainly copy one vector, but I can also copy an, a vector orthogonal to that. And if it's a higher dimensional space, then I can continue to copy other vectors which are orthogonal to the first two. What this means is that I can copy an entire basis, but a basis, at least if I'm talking about multiple qubits, is specified by n bits 
for an n qubit system. So again, I can only ever copy classical information even if I'm using quantum systems and quantum information as my information processing device. All right, so there is no uh, quantum photocopier.